Warn! Warn the bot making the same mistake! I said once that's a liability! Oh no! It's one all! It's one all! Easy, that's a great goal! Adds. That is too easy! Man United, it's he just two turns it's in Obi and shoots! Manu. They've done absolutely nothing! Guys, what an insane finish! You cannot ride this! And a mistake, and we have conceded! He's absolutely done Calais off his line! Oh my days! I just warned! I just. Can we honestly say now, Quan says a lie? Can you keep reminding me of the city game? I'm about making the same mistake! Mainu! <sighs> oh Jesus, Christmas gives it away! Oh my god, lads! We ain't winning no league, man. We ain't winning no league. I've been saying it. What are we doing, man? It's 2 1 United. Throw Kwanzaa and then he goes on and does that, but to be fair. It's over. It's over. Enjoy, you guys. Enjoy. We give them hope and they just score. Everyone saw that? Kobe Mainu just scores 2 1 to Manchester United. He did, and I'm loving <laughs> I'm loving the fake smile from Hassam. I'm gonna pretend I'm calm, but really underneath, I'm seething. Kobe Mainu just scores 2 1 to Manchester United. It's so look, look at the smile. Look at the smile. It's over. It's over. Enjoy, you guys. Enjoy. We did. We loved it. It was amazing because we had no right with that performance three times this season. Liverpool haven't been able to beat United. And last year we were criticised for not stopping City from doing a treble. And we had opportunities to do that. We we stopped Liverpool. We, we, we may have just stopped Liverpool's beautiful fairy tale ending to Jurgen Klopp's career. And out of a season of absolute turmoil and nonsense, that is a thing of beauty. Enjoy. Can we honestly say now Quan has a liability, or are you still can you keep reminding me of the City game? I love how he's frying that agenda out while he's trying not to explode. Like he's holding so much in here, Hassan. Enjoy, you guys. Enjoy. We ain't winning no league, man. We ain't winning no league. I've been saying it. <laughs> Here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh, no, 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 no. We're calling you out, Hassam. We are calling you out. Now you gotta believe us. Now you gotta believe us. Now you gotta believe us. We're gonna win the league. We're gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> got you. We got you. You have been saying you're gonna win the league. You have been confident it's going to happen, but what you're trying to do is deflect away from a five-point gap being lost. Just like in your first title race under Jurgen Klopp with City, when you had a nice gap at the top of the league, you threw it away. Liverpool seem to be allergic to title races. In the Premier League era, every time they've been in one, they've collapsed and thrown it away, and we've got to keep the same energy. Last year, Arsenal had a gap. They threw it away. They were criticised. But this whole, oh, we were never going to win it. We were the massive underdogs. Oh, my God. The lies, the lies, the lies. Stop it. Get some help. Let me take a quick call. Dom's a Liverpool fan. Dom, very good morning. Good morning, Dom. Good morning, Al. Good morning, Gary. Hi, mate. Um, yeah, I just think, um, how we doing? Uh, I, I just honestly think um, we're just not ruthless enough in front of goal. I never mm. actually thought I'd say that about us. We're just... You know, we're having three and four chances to try and, and get a goal, and you're thinking that game should have been put to bed by half time. There's no, there's no other sort of way to to put it than that. It should have been over by half time. But the the one thing that I, I have got to say, I mean, I've been I, I've rang up a few times and backed Klopp to the hill. I'm his biggest admirer, but the last three or four weeks, I'll be totally honest. I've, He's lost the plot with substitutions. I'm not criticising him as a manager. He's obviously world-class, best manager in my lifetime at the club. Um, but the substitutions and the team selections at times. Viewers, give us your thoughts on that. I wanted to go back to something else the caller said. You give me your views on substitutions from Klopp. But he said that our front line's letting us down. We should be scoring. And, and there is truth. There is genuine truth to that. No doubt about it. The front line is letting... 
Liverpool down. If you just look at these three games against Man United this season, in isolation, the front line let them down. Defensively, they have been susceptible to counterattacks and opportunities for about two years. And I said a few months ago that I was sort of putting that to the back of my mind when it comes to an, analysing Liverpool because they were finding a way to win. And after 12 months, 18 months, nearly two years of finding a way to win through that adversity, it starts to become somewhat, somewhat sustainable. Because even though the, the underlying metrics and the stats say it's not, they're proving otherwise. But since the front line's gone off the boil, now the defensive element is being exposed because they're dropping points. And we know they've dropped points because they had a five-point lead and they're now level on points with Arsenal, but Arsenal have a superior goal difference. So the front line not scoring goals and taking chances is really opening the door. They should have had four more points this season, Liverpool, against Manchester United alone, which puts them clear, which would have given them a nine-point lead, essentially, or at least four more points than they have now. But I'd love to get your thoughts on that. What's going wrong at Liverpool if you indeed think something's going wrong? Or is this a storm? Is it a storm in a teacup? Let us know. Hello, everybody. Welcome to That's Football. Arsenal are incredible. And I wanted to take a bit of time. Instead of doing this last night, I wanted to... Simp him. Simp him for a rival. <laughs> if you don't watch the terrace and you're watching this for the first time, that's a joke about me. Just so you know. Sleep on it and then wake up and do it because you know what? You can get a little bit sensationalist, you know, immediately after a result. But you know what? I look at Arsenal a year ago and I'm not an Arsenal fan. I want them to win the league. They're top of the league at the moment. Um, I think they are third favourites for the league because their running is ridiculous. But are we starting to, I'm starting to believe that Arsenal can do it. And maybe that's a jinx, but I certainly think the bottom line is whether they win the league or not. People need to wake up and give them more credit. Uh, last year, they overachieved and everybody expected and spoke about the bubble bursting before it did. And they and it, and it was gone by this time and Man City just went away with it. A lot of people said that that Arsenal team, that was their best chance of winning the league and they blew it and that would be it. And then this season, they've been a far better team. You know, they started the season on a strong defence and then since Christmas, the attacks kicked in. It, it, Mark's spot on in every, everything he said here about Arsenal, not just because it echoes a lot of my own thoughts, but I just believe on this Arsenal subject, he's right. I called out young Daniel, Spurs fan yesterday, because essentially he was saying Arsenal were going to bottle it. I'm like, do you think they're going to win the league? And he said, no. How can they bottle something that you don't think they're going to win or you don't think they have the capabilities to win? Now, he, he then sort of explained it and it made a lot more sense. Well, I think they've got the ability to win it, but I think they're going to throw it away. Now, in some people's mind, you, you can you can call that bottling, and I understand it. And Spurs are labelled with that. Whenever it comes to an opportunity to win something, they, they they don't quite get over the line. But if you still think Arsenal are third favourites simply because they have a harder running and City and Liverpool are better, then I don't necessarily think that's bottling an opportunity. However, you may disagree. But when it comes to Arsenal, where Mark is spot on, where he's absolutely right, is they can do this. And this idea they can't because they haven't got over the line before, I think it's flawed based on how strong Arsenal have been this season defensively. Between the beginning of the campaign and New Year when and after their Dubai trip where goals kicked in, I must have been ridiculed every single week saying, Terry, I thought you said Arsenal was scary. This team don't... Don't scare me at all. And that's because too many people now view football through the lens of entertainment and flair and style as opposed to the professional sport, which it is, and how important it is to have a solidified defence. They had that. They've tapered themselves. They've come into their best form at the, the, the most important time of the season. They're still not my favourites. I've reflected on it for two days. I still have Liverpool as the marginal favourites after they dropped points against United yesterday because of the know-how that both them and City have got in this scenario, that is still the, the unticked, unchecked box for Arsenal. But the reason why Arsenal will get a bit more praise for maybe not being the favourites than Liverpool and City do is because Liverpool have had their praise in years gone by getting to this point. In another two, three, four years, if Arsenal are continual title challengers, title winners, Champions League winners, as the other two have been, they won't be spoken about in the same breath as almost 
wow, it's incredible how they've got to this stage where just two years ago we were laughing at them for bottling top four. That's why there is more praise around Arsenal than you see towards Liverpool and City because they had their praise during their growth. They are now just seen as the best two teams in England. And I think people don't always get that perspective. But look, they, they were incredible again this weekend, Arsenal. I agree with what Mark Goldbridge had to say here. They can win the league. They're not the favourites yet, in my humble opinion. But I'd love to get your views and your opinions on that. Hit the like button, people. Uh, and some, some great stuff to come up now about Chelsea. <laughs> Oh my fucking god, this hasn't just happened. <laughs> oh my fucking god, guys, why? Why? What are we doing? This defense is gonna kill me, man. What the f why? <laughs> why? 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 <laughs> is that Jer is that Bogle? Is that the guy from Derby County on the Lampard? The disbelief. The shock. Is amazing. Everyone's on side. Look. Oh, for sake, man. Petrovic, what are we doing? By the way, Petrovic, and I was young, and he's had some mistakes recently. Again, any Chelsea fan thinking, oh, this guy will be good enough for next year. No, you need an elite level goalkeeper. Post, you've got to cover the near post. You've got to. Look. Oh, goalkeep him. Oh, it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Joke, bro. If we end up, oh my God. Did we just concede that? No, 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 no. Guys, 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 don't with me don't fuck with me don't <laughs> fuck with me guys hey naughty naughty you... oh my god <laughs> with me guys <laughs> don't play with me hey that ain't funny guys where's the var it must be a foul must something... Come on. No, that's not funny <laughs> no there's no way we didn't just bring on center backs to go and lose the first header uh... <laughs> Bruv. Offside, somebody? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> oh, we lose another header. Oh, and another offside. The copium, the copium, and the pain. And I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. It was actually nice to see Chelsea drop some points late on. It made me feel a little bit better about the way they dunked on us the other day. But I, I don't get Chelsea. I mean, the players need calling out. But the support still for Potch, I find absolutely astronomical. Let's take a little listen here to my bro, Carefree Lewis. It will play, I'm sure. Chelsea 2. What toxic positive narrative do you want me to spin for this one, then? Do you know what's really weird? When I started saying, like, TPFs, toxic positivity fans, a couple of years ago, I can't believe how widespread that's become now. I can't believe... How everyone uses it. I'm 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 touched and honored. Sometimes I think I should copyright some of these phrases and then charge everybody like a couple of pounds every time they use it. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. For anyone that gets offended, it's a joke. Don't take it seriously or literally. Anyway, back to Lewis. Tell me. Trust the process, they said. <laughs> Believe in the manager. Pochettino needs time. It's time to go! He needs time. Every single one of you who has backed Pochettino through this, you have allowed the standards of this football club to drop. And I've got to a point where I'm just not debating with you lot anymore. If you stand by Pochettino through this performance, God help you. I, I agree. I agree with him, and I said this on the on on the terrace last night on on our full fan uh, full fan uh, highlight show. Is that everybody always? Yeah, but Arteta struggled in the beginning of the rebuild. Now look where they are. We should follow suit. Mikel Arteta had his first managerial job, and it was taking over an Arsenal team. Yes, who had won some FA Cups, but Arsenal fans all admitted back then they papered over cracks. This was an Arsenal team that had barely challenged for a league title win, what, 10 to 15 or so years, that had been absolutely on its knees for over a decade. And it was Arteta's first ever job. This was a Chelsea team who were champions of Europe a few years ago. In the first six months in his first full season under, under Tuchel, were looking really strong. Who have just, I know they haven't competed for a league title in a number of years now, but the regression has been so quick. It should be a much quicker process to turn around and get back on track with the right football decision makers running things. Plus, Potch is a very experienced manager. This team 
would still be inconsistent with these young players, but they should be better drilled, better in possession and better out of possession. Those things are being ignored. And the comparison to Arteta, I believe, is a false one. The clubs are in different situations. The managers have different experiences. And even with Arteta, when you go back and look now, you could still see what he was trying to do. You can't now. You, you can't with this manager, in my personal opinion. Now, you may disagree. You may think Poch needs more time, but you need to say why. What is it you're seeing? What are you seeing from him that makes you think he deserves more time? And even when it comes to Arteta, there are gooners now that are glad he's here, but say that he still could have been sacked, maybe should have been sacked at some point. Doesn't necessarily mean they wouldn't be where they are now if they brought in a better manager who continued the quote-unquote process. But look, I'd love to get your thoughts. I'd love to get your feelings on what Lewis has said here. Make sure you're subscribing to The Terrace. Check out the new channel, The Squad, as well. Brand new show on there. Not been seen anywhere else. Go and check that out. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you on the top six shows, 6 p.m. tonight. Peace.